Namaste. So after the last episode of Sri Panchadashi, I was thinking over and contemplating those verses very deeply. Something clicked and I was able to have a cognition, make a connection between the description of Maya in those verses and the experience in meditation. And this is vital, crucial insight. So let me describe it for you. Okay, it says that when Maya is in pure goodness, in other words, all the modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance, are quiescent and in balance, that this is called the Shuddha Sattva, pure goodness. And it is considered the ultimate knowledge. Because remember, to know something requires a knower, a known, and the act of knowing. So in other words, this is duality. Maya, that's okay. Because Maya is perfectly subservient to Brahman. Now, it also says that Ishwara, Shiva, or Vishnu, or whatever form of the Godhead, the, the personal form you like, is the reflection of Brahman in the Maya, the pure Maya, pure goodness. So he has complete knowledge of everything in the creation. And he also has complete power, omniscient and omnipresent. This is Ishwara, this is God, okay? Brahman is beyond even the concept of God. But when Brahman, how can I say, becomes Maya due to the desire to create, it also states in the text that this is the Ananda aspect, the bliss aspect of Brahman. So why does Brahman create the universe? To enjoy it. There's another text somewhere in one of Shankaracharya's purports where he says, Brahman creates the universe for his own self-realization. In other words, Brahman wants to know itself, but it can't know in the non-dual state. So it creates an apparent duality in which the Pure goodness, Shuddha Sattva, can act as a mirror and reflecting Brahman to itself. And this is Ishwar. So what does it mean when we are in meditation? And first of all, we get rid of all the duality the gross body and the subtle body, the five sheaths, anamaya kosha, pranamaya kosha, manamaya kosha, vijnanamaya kosha, and even the anandamaya kosha. We get rid of those five sheaths, and where are we? In nothing, emptiness, shunyata. So in that state, where there is no mode of passion or ignorance, Brahman can reflect in the purified intelligence, the purified mind, the antakarana, purified of passion and ignorance, action and lethargy, or ignorance, huh? And this is the light that we see in meditation. This should be cultivated because this 
is bliss. This is the happiness for which Brahman is always searching. Now, when Brahman takes embodiments in a human or animal body, our only occupation, if you analyze it, is searching for objects of enjoyment, isn't it? We want a nice body, a nice home, a nice family and community, nice food, nice clothes, nice relationships, everything we want, enjoyable. And we don't want anything that apparently threatens our existence, isn't it? That's why people love being home. In home, you feel safe, or you should feel safe. And that means your existence is not threatened by apparent non-existence. But anyway, in meditation, because the, the main problem in self-realization is realizing the ananda potency. The sat, or existence potency, and the chit, or consciousness potency, are realized automatically. We just have to recognize the fact that every living being has intuitive realization that I exist and that I am conscious. Maybe they can't, you know, express it like that, but they know it intuitively. And if you inquire, if you ask them, they will say, yes, I exist and I'm conscious. So then, what is the problem? Why are we struggling? Why are we suffering? Why are we in ignorance? Because we try to see ourselves in a distorted mirror. The intelligence affected by passion and ignorance. Passion is lust. Ignorance is stupidity, dullness. Huh? In Sanskrit, jada. That means inertia. Not doing anything. Not even knowing anything. And passion, of course, is the pursuit of objects of desire. But we find that the more we become entangled in the pursuit of these objects, the more we forget our original bliss and become covered by suffering. And so the answer to that is plain. It's because we go away from the Shuddha Sattva, the pure goodness of original Maya, original Prakriti, nature. And we get into these modes of passion, searching for desires and the objects of desires and ignorance, the feeling of not knowing. Why is this chakra called Agnya? Agnya means not knowing. Because the mind doesn't know. The mind can't know. Because the mind is only a symbolic, memory-driven computer that sorts out all the sense inputs and classifies them according to whether or not they're a threat to our survival. I mean, really. That's what the mind is designed by evolution to do. Okay? By nature. It is a doubter. It's a skeptic doesn't want to trust, doesn't want to believe anything, but tests everything to see if it's real or if it could be a threat. And then intelligence, however, can go beyond the mind and decide, wait a minute, I've had enough of this suffering in material life. I want to find out the actual truth. What am I? Who am I? What is this world? Why am I suffering? How can I get out of this suffering condition? And so on and so on. Ultimately, realizing itself as Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi, 
then what? So we can easily realize the existence and consciousness aspects of Brahman. And we can also realize the ananda aspect, the bliss aspect of Brahman, and become completely satisfied by that bliss. We just have to realize, wait a minute, if I go away from pure goodness, if I get involved in action and reaction, creating causes in the material world and becoming their effects, I'm going to suffer. But I don't want to suffer. You know, just like we don't eat poison. <laughs> you know, we don't go take a bottle of cyanide pills. That's stupid. That's ignorance. And in the same way, to go out of pure goodness into action, into passion, in pursuit of sense enjoyment is also ignorance because it leads to suffering. We want enjoyment, but that's not the result we get. I mean, maybe we get a little bit of enjoyment, yeah? But it's very temporary and imperfect. We pointed this out numerous times. <laughs> so what is the answer? Sit down, still the mind, actually drop the mind, drop the ego, and simply focus on the light, the light of consciousness, the light of pure awareness, reflected in the pure intelligence of Maya, the Shakti. This is the greatest happiness. Why? It's unconditional. We simply have to recognize the fact, just like we have to recognize the fact that we are consciousness, aham brahmasmi. Once we do that and realize, oh, I'm not the body, I'm not the mind, etc., etc., that's such a relief because it's the truth. And in the same way, when we recognize that, oh, this uh, reflection this light that I see in meditation, this is the self, this is myself, reflected in the mirror of pure intelligence, intelligence in the mode of goodness, intelligence without a desire for action and without any ignorance. This becomes the doorway to realizing the endless ananda, the unconditional enjoyment and bliss, that is our real nature. And that is just the final aspect of self-realization that brings us to complete satisfaction. Aum Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung Aung Namah Shivaya